During the day, Richard, I think we've seen some really good examples of really good lean activity. And in fact, a really good company doing really good stuff with, with lean. And I'd just like to pick out three areas to, to highlight. Um, first of all, the 5S activity, which I think is really solid and, and really being driven by the needs of the business, etc. And I think also, if you look at the A3, that's another really good example of what I might call the push lean. It's, it's something that's been driven by the management and it's got a focus and it's, it's addressing some of the big issues in, in the business. And I think what I see is the organisation moving into this sort of pull-based uh, approach and the uh, short interval control boards is a really good example of that. So the question is, well, why did you need to do more? Because it seems like a, an organisation doing lean well. OK, um, good question in that I think we are in a good place. Um, as a business now over the last couple of years, um, the site has seen significant improvement in terms of our financial deliveries. Um, we've had some good recognition from our customers in terms of our service and our quality. We've picked up a couple of industry awards. Um, and we've got all the certifications that we require um, as a food production site from BRC, from the International uh, Food Standards and from ISO. But we do have to deliver more for the business. And there's a recognition amongst us that if we stay with this push-based approach, there probably is a ceiling to where we can get to. And to really go and deliver greater financial benefits, improvements in quality, service, all the different critical aspects of our operation, we need to move to more of a pool-based approach where we've got 500 plus people driving the business, as opposed to at the moment probably a hard core of 20 or 30 being the brains and the rest following. So it's really flipping that on its head. Um, and with regards to our maturities, you can see on the slide, um, we've tried to break our maturity down to five levels. And I would say at the moment, we believe we're around the second stage. So we're getting to the point where we're controlling variation. And it's at that point where we feel the flip to stage three requires a slightly different approach. Um, and that's why we're at this point at the moment. Mm. I mean, looking at that and, and having a look at the next slide, what, what you'll see is we typically see organisations go in, do some lean programme, and sometimes it works well, and sometimes it doesn't work quite as well, because they're trying to put a system of improvement in when they haven't got control and stability. And what I've seen is that you have control, you have stability, you have that platform. So again, it's somewhere as a business round about the green circle, where you've got ready for that sort of takeoff of, if you like, the next journey, which is probably a little bit more under the surface on the iceberg, whereas some of the 5S looks like it's above the surface. So it's bringing the best of both sides out. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think our approach to date has been correct in that when we started here, we had significant ver variation, volatility in our performance day to day across a number of our key metrics. Um, we're now at the point where we've got that stability as I said earlier, to move on um, takes a different approach. And on the point about the below the water line, I think it's going to be a challenge. I think that it is a change. I think you know managers typically probably feel more comfortable where you have that significant variation because it probably requires a slightly more dominant leadership style. Whereas where you've got the control and to really move into that coaching facilitation will stretch some of our management team because it really does require a different approach, one of much more facilitation sure. and not providing the solutions but providing the environment for their team to work out that solution themselves. Sure, and as Gil mentioned earlier, the style is facilitation and mentoring yeah. rather than, well certainly before where you are now was more the sort of uh, firefighter sorting out the problems and looking like a hero but actually it's, it's a very different style, which is clearly going to be a challenge going forward. Uh, totally. The, the managers that will be a success in this organisation are the ones who aren't there seen as firefighting, who are the ones that can put the processes, the systems in, the systems of work that will deliver, but also get their team to be thinking about the future, to thinking about improvements, how they can actually find that solution 
and then standardise it and make sure that it can be sustained. Okay, so um, what I'm seeing is a good business that's got a really good idea that there's stuff they need to do going forward. So why is it that you chose to bring someone in to sort of give you a, a snapshot of where you are? What, what was the thinking behind that? Um, well, it's not going against what I said earlier. I think it's very important that our system for continuous improvement is owned within. I think it's really important periodically to go and get external objectives or sorry, an, an objective view of where we are. Um, so we went out and had a look to see who would be the right partner for that. And for us, SA Partners ticks sort of two boxes. One, that they have significant experience in terms of industrial applications like this. But secondly, they're recognised as being at, at the forefront of lean thinking. Um, so it was important for us to go out to someone like SA Partners and get them to come and critique and to be honest, to give us the confidence that when we make this change in style that we are actually at that level of maturity and that the change we're going to make is right for our environment and our current level of maturity. Mm. So after you'd got that sort of external perspective of where you were, uh, I think the next step was for you to have a look yourselves and see if you agreed before developing the way forward. Yeah, I, I think the process worked really well. So we had a couple of your team come in, um, interview 30 people completely across the business um, and across the whole hierarchy. So from operatives to sales guys from our head office in Guildford on the other side of the country, got a complete spectrum of views and understanding of where we are. Um, we then went into two days with yourself where I think it was really enlightening for me and the rest of the management team to see where you put us, as you can see on the slide, where our strengths and weaknesses were against... And it was a pretty close match between the internal view and the external perspective. Yeah, I, I think the way that it was structured that we benchmarked ourselves as, as a management team, if you like, independently to your research and then married them up, I suppose it was encouraging that by and large um, we agreed with where we were slightly weak and where we had our strengths. Yes, good. And taking that, if you like, current state, how did you go forward and develop what are you going to do and what the future state and yeah. what was the process you went through? Um, we sat and we thought really we went right forward to the ideal state, you know, what is utopia for this site, where do we want to be? Like in three, terms four of, years ahead. Yes, so three, like four that, years yeah. ahead and, and went then against each one of those areas and tried to articulate what that would look like in terms of the metrics, in terms of the structures and the process that we'd have. But then I think to get something deliverable that we can go after, we then step back to the future state. So something for us, what we worked on, mm. 18 months out. Um, and 18 months is very crucial for us. Um, you know, owned by a private equity firm, we have some very clear milestones. So what sort of thing, what's in that roadmap? Yeah. What does it look like and what's the feel of it? Yeah. The roadmap, whilst now looking like quite a concise list of, of projects and activities actually started as something much larger and what it really is, is is where we have reviewed the requirements that we need to undertake and put them in a structure but a structure that covers off every different aspect so it puts a focus on taking the five SDA3s to another level but it also makes sure that we've got the right weighted approach to our improvement activities, to our development of our people, to the ongoing education. So it, for me, the true benefit of the roadmap means that you get this lovely spread across your critical success factors and that we have a very clear hierarchy of what we're doing. So, Richard, thank you very much for inviting us along. It's certainly been an interesting day and uh, I think we've seen some really good lean activity in, in the organisation on your journey towards a, a great company. Um, but maybe for you and your team, what have been the key benefits in the uh, roadmap and, and the various activity that you've been going through? I think I'd probably put them in three areas. Um, for me, firstly, confidence. I think it's been great for us as a site to go out, get the external input to make sure that we are going in the right direction because what we're about to embark on is another 18 months of focus work. So very much 
confidence. Secondly, I would say that we had what was probably a fairly long list of activities, and whilst we haven't particularly come up with any new ones, I think what we've done now is really put them in a well-structured roadmap where we know at which time intervals, we're not starting them all at once. We've actually got some where we said, do you know what, we're not going to go there. We're actually mm -hmm. going to put those down and we have a priority. So, so it's the key vital few, yeah. small number of things yeah. at each level of the business at, at each particular and, time. And making sure there is visibility to everyone on the site, what they are and when we're going to go after them. Sure. Um, and then for me, thirdly, it's about our KPIs. I think we learned that we had a very heavy focus on our OEE and on our cost per case. And I think when we had that volatility, that was probably right. I think with where we are now, with our desire to move from this push base to a pull, we need to make sure that we've got the right KPIs. So we are going to change the KPIs that we've got to make sure there's a much more even spread across our critical success factors, which will ensure that we are measuring our approach from hopefully from being a good organisation to being one that is recognised as being a great organisation. Well, thank you once again, and certainly on your journey from push to pull, I'd, with your permission, like to come back, have a look and how you see how you're getting on. No, it's great. Thank you very much. So there you have it, an organisation on the journey from push lean to pull lean. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see other videos of this nature, or white papers, or in fact other resources, please make sure you come back and visit us on leanbusinesssystem.com.